stop them both. These are actually called flashers, not ribbons, and they're actually holding up my socks. Oh, okay. and this, this fancy hat is called a Glengarry, and this cap has a lot of history. So let me tell you about it one second. Oh, we're getting fixed here. Okay. We're taking that, yeah, we have that back. Okay, so, fun fact, it first appeared, <laughs> it first appeared in the 1700s and was known as the Balmoral. You actually saw a picture of the Balmoral Castle up there. And it continued in fashion through the Victorian era to what we know today. And I'll have you know it's still used by the Scottish military and is also equally used in academic dress every single year. So, I'm actually very much in vogue. He's Thank in you. vogue. Yes. So, but it looks like you have a Scottish theme going on as well with your bonnet, your scarf. It is not a bonnet. It is a tam o shanter or a tammy, and it also has real history. It was named for the character Tom O'Shanter in the poem by the same name by Robert Burns. And this scarf is an aerosol. Normally it would be much, much larger and wrapped around like a kilt, but tonight I'm going for the less is more luck. You look fabulous, <laughs> but enough about us. We want to thank you guys so much for coming to our first in-person concert in almost 19 months. <laughs> We are so thrilled to be here. So, as we do at every concert, if we can get Lewis to bring the lights up just a little bit, how many people are here for their first visit? Raise your hand. I knew Raise half this place was going to raise their hand. Karen. Thank you. Well, we are thrilled to have you guys here. And as you probably know, tonight we are celebrating together a musical tribute to our new university president and her Scottish roots, as well as our collective American connections with Scotland. So we're going to ask Dr. Allison morrison Shuttler, our new president, whose seats are in that back corner, for her to stand and be recognized along with First Gentleman Fowler. Yes. Welcome to the University of Lynchburg. Thank you so much. So, bit of trivia here. Cynthia, did you know that of the 46 gentlemen who have been president of the United States, 35 of them have either been Scottish or Ulster Scots descent. Really? Yes. 35. That, yes, I, can, I cannot tell a lie. And that started with George Washington, Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, and Donald Trump. And I understand that Dr. Hatcher is from the Guthrie clan and that you are from the Craig clan. And do we have any other Scottish descendants out there? Can you tell us your clan? Go. Welcome. This is fantastic. And I saw some Scottish dress out there, too. So I'm not the only one. Thank you. Uh, our next tune is a march written by John Philip Sousa, the March King himself. And here's a short excerpt from a rare recording from 1883 of Sousa's band playing a Scottish tune. <laughs> From 1894 until 1909, Sousa's name appeared on hundreds of recordings and piano rolls. But by 1909, following a change in a copyright law, he expanded his relationship with the phonograph to make recordings for the Edison Company. Now, all of this he did while disliking the recording industry itself. And he actually refer referred to recorded music as canned music, which we actually still use that term today. So, of the 35 years he was making recordings, he refused to conduct during any of the recording sessions, not a single one. However, today we luckily have many of his recordings available, and they are very well done by the United States Marine Band. So, Sousa wrote a march based on an old Scottish ballad called Annie Laurie around 1883, and he remarked that it was the most beautiful of all folk songs. Tonight, 
we have Summer Campbell, and she will conduct the Bonnie Annie Lori March by Sousa in a traditional Scottish drum major style of conducting. Drum major Campbell, take it away! tradition with a twist, and if you look at the subline, it's about our glorious cemeteries. That is stimulated by the military formations that we know so well. They of course come from the battlefield, moving formed bodies of men around the Napoleonic battlefields. Now it's state ceremonial. There is symmetry about every military formation. Even if it's in combat, it will have geometry about it. It plays in so well. We've got three state bands, the band of the Scots Guards, the band of the Irish Guards, and the band of the Royal Regiment of Scotland. Three huge musical instruments which are emblematic about what the world knows of British state ceremony. They've got a huge musical programme and when we look at the Esplanade here, when you put these three bands on there, there is no room for them to move sideways around. All the senses should be busy. Of course, the lone pipe is very much part, as are the mass pipes and drums, then coming across that draw, which is an extraordinary sound. The Great Highland Bagpipe, beautifully played, all tuned to the same. The great skill, well, those only nine notes on a bagpipe, having everybody tuned to the same is a great, great skill. The Lone Piper, of course, he's right up on the battlements. He's in a very windswept place. There's a certain amount of windage in a pipe where he's got a kilt, he's got a plaid, he's got a feather bonnet, and he's probably blowing about 30 knots up there as well. And he's got to be able to play a solo in front of this live audience. There is no room for error at all. But this year, we also have a lone drummer. There's a two, as you probably know, 
comes from the old Dutch do dem tattoo, which was a signal to the innkeepers in the Low Countries in the 17th to turn off the supply drip. Soldiers would then stop enjoying the evening and they'd make their way back to barracks without drama. Do them tattoo became tattoo and that became tattoo. So we're going to end this year with a solitary drummer doing tattoo and that's the end. Wow, that was so impressive. Have you have you actually seen that show before? Actually, no, but I have visited Edinburgh Castle in August when they were preparing for that event. Did you see all those steel drums? I did, but they looked just a little, little out of place. However, I know that Trinidad is considered to be part of the British Commonwealth, mm -hmm. and I bet playing all those steel drums with all those notes inside of it would be such a, a, a ton of fun. It really is a shame that we don't have either a, a pipe and drum or a steel band here at the university. Well, actually, look what we bought this summer. What? Seriously? Oh. It's true. We are going to be starting a steel drum ensemble for all interested students and community members in January. This ensemble is going to be for both indoor and outdoor performing purposes. That's great, and we will definitely be on the lookout later this month for some Friday clinics for interested folks to come and check it out. Now, can faculty and, and staff join in too? Absolutely. I'm going to play the larger drums, all six of them at the same time. Not if I get to them first. But Good thing we got two sets. That. Yes, yes. So, wait, 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 wait. Brigadoon? Is that really a word? I think so. It looks like it. It's an elusive word, though, but it is a noun. It's a person or a place or a phenomenon that is likened in some way to Brigadoon, a mythical, idealized Scottish account of a rare and fleeting appearance or occurrence. Well, as you likely know, in 1947, mm -hmm. Brigadoon was also a wonderful Broadway musical written by Lerner and Lowe. And then it was followed by a wonderful film version, followed by numerous revivals, both on the Broadway stage and at communities and school theater productions around the United States. It's a story about two American game hunters in Scotland who happen upon a mysterious village in which the people dress and speak as if they're from another era. One of the Americans is drawn to one of the Scottish lasses and must choose between the magical Brigadoon and his more conventional fiance. Tonight, we are proud to include Curtain Call from our theater department under the direction of Loretta Whitman and Dana Ballard, who's gonna combine with our community big band under the direction of Dr. Chris McGee to perform Almost Like Being In Love. <laughs> Thank you. 
Day, September 30th at 4 o'clock, right outside this hall, the university is going to unveil the University of Lynchburg Tartan. The ceremony is going to include a reception, and we are all invited. Let's take a look at how our tartan is going to be made in Scotland. words are put to the melody of the Scottish minstrel coming through the town. This is a variant of the tune to which Old Lang Syne is usually sung. The melodic shape is almost identical. The difference lies in the tempo and the rhythm. Tonight we are mixing it up even more with an upbeat jazz version by our community big band under the direction once again of Dr. Chris McGee.
Isn't that incredible? How's that for some Scottish drumming, American style, right? That was fantastic. So, up next we have junior Charlie Scutt, who studies in the studio of Teresa Engel, who was class of 2011 here at the university, and he will perform Schottisch by Max Brook, accompanied by Dr. Cynthia Ramsey.
that hush of even tide o'er the hills beyond the clyde i go roaming in that heaven down in the glen though humble it may be there's an angel waits for me in that lonely little heaven down in the glen across the moonlit heather my lassie calls as I roam tis soon we'll be together in that heaven we call Sheep are in the fold, and there's peace worth more than gold for a shepherd in that heaven down in the glen. Twilight is softly falling. As the sun sinks in the west, the one I love is calling. Shepherd, come home to rest. At hush of eventide, o'er the hills beyond the clyde, I go roaming in that heaven, down in the glen. Though humble it may be, there's an angel waits for me in that lonely little heaven, down in. My lassie calls as I roam. Tis soon we'll be together in that heaven we call a home. The sheep are in the fold, and there's peace worth more than gold. For a shepherd in that heaven, down in the
Salt in the morning. And then this tune might at first glance appear to be a bit out of place, but actually it's the essence to our musical performance this evening. Scientists tell us that the central Pangean mountain range formed over 200 million years ago, which extended south through the Appalachian Mountains. The supercontinent of Pangaea pulled apart and the mountain chain was broken up, thus creating the beautiful and breathtaking peaks in the Appalachian Mountains, as well as the Scottish Highlands. The traditions of Appalachia were largely influenced by settlers from Scotland and Ireland. You might say this next tune is older than the hills. <laughs> <laughs> this next song acknowledges those Scottish pioneers with a musical walk through the woods and the mountains of both the Appalachian and the Caledonian Mountains. Appalachian Morning.
come to the end of our Songs of Scotland concert this evening, and we hope that you guys have enjoyed being here just as much as we have enjoyed being back with you tonight. And we definitely hope you can join us again on November 11th and 12th when we present Duty, Honor, and Country. So, as with all concerts, we do not charge admission, but we would gratefully accept any donations that you would like to give when you leave. Our newly formed percussion section will have a basket at each door if you wish to contribute. We thank you ahead of time. Immediately following this concert, our concert choir will present a concert over in Snyder Chapel entitled, My Spirit is Uncaged. We hope you can join us. But first, we have a Scottish Rhapsody.
Okay, you have to stop me. All right. Uh, thank you so much for coming. May I encourage you, please, to go over and hear our illustrious choir. Uh, they're waiting for us, so scoot fast. Good night, everybody.